you. God bless you my brethren. Thank you for joining our teleconference tonight. May the good Lord bless you as we go into the word of God. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. He is a great God. He is worthy to be praised from the uprising of the sun to the going down thereof. The name of the Lord is to be praised. So God bless you. We are going to go into our lesson. And before I do, I'm going to have a short prayer. Um, call us upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless your holy, precious name. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for us coming together, Lord, in this teleconference, Lord, to lift you up and to glorify you and even to draw nearer to you as we know you draw nearer to us. Bless us and bless everyone that join. Have your way we pray as we give you thanks and we give you praise and we give you glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord and I say again welcome to our teleconference service. We have been on a season of parables and we are talking we are, we are looking into the parables that Jesus spoke um, Jesus spoke many many parables and it was for us to use this parable to understand who Jesus is is to understand who God is is to understand this great creator of the earth the great creator of the universe we we have to understand the mind of God and God wants us to understand him so he give us these words and some of his words as he spoke he spoke in parables and we have been through a few parables before we have been through the parable of the sower the farmer that sows the seed and how some fell some fell among stony ground some fell among thorns and some fell on good ground and we've been through that and what happened to the seeds that fell among thorns what happened to the seed that fell among um, um, stony ground what happened to the seed that fell on good ground and we see that the word told us that only the seed that fell on good ground was the seed that survived and increased and brought forth fruit so the seed that fell on good ground, the, the, the seed was the word of God and the ground was our heart. So the, if our heart is prepared to receive the word of God, then those seeds will grow and we will bring forth fruit and many fruit if we, our heart is ready for the word of God. So it's so important that our heart will be ready for the word of God that we will receive the word of God joyfully and that's what God wants God wants us to receive his word joyfully and also we had the parable of um, we have the parable of um, yes we have the parable of the Pharisees and the publican that there was, a, they went to pray, they went to the house of God to pray, and the Pharisees prayed, and the publican prayed. But because the Pharisees' prayer was not accepted to God, because he boasted of what he has done, how he fasts twice a week, how he gave alms to the poor, how he paid his tithes, and God wasn't interested in all that. God was interested in humility, 
not telling much you how good you are. God wants us to look at ourselves and look at Him. He is perfect. He is holy. He is wonderful. He is exalted. And so when we look at ourselves and we come before God, we don't come before God in a boast to say what we have done, but we come before God humbly in ourselves. And this was the prayer of the Pharisee that he thought he had done so much good that he was worthy of the kingdom of God. But the, the, the publican, the, the public on the common man, he didn't as much as lift up his eyes to the heaven, but he just said, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And the Bible says, Jesus said, the publican went to his home more justified than the Pharisees who boasted himself. So that was a lesson for us to know that we should, we should humble ourselves before God. When we come before God, we should come before God with humility. And when we come before God with humility, he accepts us and he blesses us because God resists the proud. It's never, it's never good to come before God with pride. Come before God with humility. And so God accepted the prayer of the publican. All he said was, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. That's all he said. And God justified him. And then we think about the thief, the thief on the cross. All the thief said was, Lord, remember me when you come into your glory. And Jesus says, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Just a simple prayer, but a prayer that comes from the heart. A sincere prayer. That's what God wants from us. So we looked at those parables, and we also looked at the parable of the prodigal son. We know also how the prodigal son, he had, this good man, had two sons. And the youngest said to his father, Give me what portion falleth to me. And the father divided his portion, and he took his portion and went into a far land. And then he wasted his substance. All that he had, he wasted it. And he went to a stage of deprivation. De deprivation. He was deprived of everything. He had nothing left. And the citizen of that far city, far country, gave him, to f gave him a job to feed the swine. And he was so deprived that he said he would have eaten the food that the swine eat it. And we know the swine eat anything. We know pigs. They eat anything. Anything you throw before the pig, they'll eat it. So this son was in his father's house. He had everything he wanted. But he wanted to be on his own. And that was just to say, he wanted to be his own boss. He wanted to move away from his father. He wanted to do his own thing. And it didn't work out very well for him. But eventually he said to himself, I think of my father's house. My father has many servants. Many servants. And none of them is in my condition. I will go back. The Bible says that young man came to himself. He said, I will go back to my father's house. And I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against thee. Make me as one of your highest servants. Praise God. That's a wonderful parable. It shows the love of God. It shows how much God loves us. And this good man, even though his son took his belongings, went away and spoke, and wasted his belongings and righteous living his father loved him still and so it is with us we may have strayed from God far away from God but the minute we turn around and said I'm going back to the Lord I'm going back to Jesus I'm making my way back to the Lord the Lord is making his way back to us if we make a step towards him, he's making a faster step towards us. Because if we look at that story of the prodigal son, the Bible says when he was returning to his father, and when he was yet a far way off, his father saw him. 
and his father seeing him, his father ran towards him and took him and grabbed him and hugged him. And the father was so delighted to see his son. That is the light that God that is the delight that God has in us. God loves us so much. If we make one step towards God, God is making two steps towards us. Because the prodigal son came to the father uncertain, uncertainty because he didn't know how his father would receive him. But his father was so joyful to see him. His father said to his servant, put a, uh, put a shoes on his feet, put a ring on his finger, put the best, and, uh, the best garment upon him. Oh, praise God. So it shows us how much God loves us. It shows us, it was a parable to show us how God loves us. And so we went through the prodigal son. I was taken from Luke chapter 18. And we also, and we also went through um, the wedding garment. Um, we have studied the wedding garment, um, how important it is that us, we must be, we are the church. We are the church. We are the bride of Christ. Jesus is the Jesus is a groom and we are the bride. The church is the bride of Christ. And so we see that many were invited to the great supper, to the wedding, and many turned, made excuse that they had they had merchandise to look after. They made ex they all made excuse that they can't go to the wedding, the great wedding. And this was taken from Matthew 22. And the, the good man says he invited them and they made excuse not to go into the wedding, to join the wedding party. And the good man said to his servant, they said, go to the byways and the highways and bid all to come in because it is furnished. Everything is ready. There is so much of everything. I want to have, I want to have a full house. And so it says that they that were invited was not, they had made excuse and they were afterwards rejected because they found other things to do rather than come to the great wedding or to the marriage. And so it tells us that when God calls us, we must answer. We must be ready to answer to the call. We must be ready to answer the call of the master and so it is for us when we get a call from God let's answer the call said as Isaiah said as Isaiah, as Isaiah says here I am here I am Lord use me so we, we want to say here I am Lord use me we want to be prepared to be used by God because God wants us. You know, in this world you have many people who are made redundant from their job. They have lost their jobs. They, many people can't find employment. But with God, there's always work. God has got a bundle of work for every one of us to do. So let us be ready and prepared. And uh, last week we went to the the parable of the ten virgin five was wise and five was foolish because they were all in the church they were all chaste virgin they were all like safe people but they did not have what God wanted they did not have that connection with God five was wise and they maintained a connection with the good Lord they continue praying and seeking God. Continue praying and seeking God. Continue talking, having a connection with God. The others were, were just lazy. Was not even, wasn't on, wasn't ready. Wasn't prepared. Maybe they had the cares of life that took away their thoughts and took away their intention or whatever. But they were not prepared. 
And when they had said, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Those five that were ready went out and meet the, 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 the bridegroom. But the five was more not ready, were locked out. So it behooves us. All these parables that Jesus spoke was for us to understand and to know what God expects of us, what God what God wants us to understand Him. God wants us to understand how what He expects of us. You know, and we have to we are to fulfill the expectation of the Lord. If we have to reign with Him, we have to suffer with Him. We have to walk with Him. We have to follow Him. We have to live in His Word. We have to be saturated in the Word of God. We have to understand what God is saying to us. We have to understand what God is expecting from us. We understand that our God is holy. He's righteous. And every day we need a washing. We need a purging. We, we, we need, you know, like in our natural, in our natural body, we, we, we have to wash ourselves daily. We have to have a shower. We have to have a bath regularly. If we don't and we go days and days without having a wash, we will, smell, we will stink. Put it that way. We will stink because we do not wash. Now in the spiritual, in the spiritual, in the natural, in the spiritual, not the natural, in the natural we have to have a wash to keep our body clean. In the spiritual we have to wash our spirit. How do we wash our spirit? In the Word of God. In the commandments of God, in the ways of God, in the precepts of God. This is how we cleanse. That word, David said, that was a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word of God. We have to know and understand the word of God. And that is what God expects of us. And God how expects us to understand His Word. Now Going into this today, we are looking into the parable of the ten talent. And it's taken from Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. The ten talent. And we want to look at what God is saying to us in this parable. As I always say, we know a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. It's an earthly story which tells us which relate heaven's activity to earth, to earthly activity to heaven. So we look at the hev- we look at the earth and we compare it to the heavenly. So a parable is just for us to have a better perception of what heaven is and what right. heaven is expecting. So, no, I still have my own so, so I'm looking at Matthew 24. I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at Matthews um, 25 and I'm going to read from verse 14 down to the end. Matthews 25. It says, Jesus who spoke this parable, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servant and deliver his goods to them. And to one he gave five talent, and to another two, and unto another one. To each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on his journey. Then he who had five had received five talent went and traded it with them and made another five. And and likewise, he who had two talent gained two more also. But he who had received one talent went and dig in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and to settle the account with them. So he who received five talents came and bought another five talents, saying, Lord, you have delivered unto me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents 
besides them. His Lord said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He who had two talents came and said, Lord, you deliver unto me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talent besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he that had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you was a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not set scattered seeds, and I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. There you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said unto him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap what I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would receive my own interests. Therefore, take the talent from him that and give it to him who has ten talent. For everyone who has more shall be given, and he will have more abundantly. But him who does not have even what he has will be taken away. And he said, And cast that unprofitable servant into utter darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So let us look what what is God saying to us? What is God saying to us? Is that every one of those three individuals was given talent according to their ability, according to how God rated their ability. So this good man, now this is representative of God himself. When, we, when, when, when the Bible says a man was traveling to a far country and he gave his servant talent of his goods to them, it represented God and us. It's an earthly story, but it's representing God and us. So God has given us Everyone who call, who God call, He has given us a talent according to our, our ability. Whatever it may be, it may be to evangelize, it may be to preach, it may be to teach, it may be to, to help the poor, and it helped me to guide God's people. Whatever the talent may be, it may be to sing. And to glorify God with your voice, the voice that God has given you. Not everybody have a beautiful voice. Some people can have, have, have a beautiful voice. They can just sing like an angel because God gave them that ability. That is given to us to give God glory. And if, if we, as the Bible says, everyone is given a um, spiritual gift according to their according to the the leading of the Spirit. So everyone's given a spiritual gift as children of God. Everyone's got a spiritual gift. You have something. If you don't, if you have something you don't know what you have, ask God. God has given everyone, all those three people who represent the world, God gave everyone a talent. 
But whatever talent God gives us, we must use it to His glory. And this is what God is saying. The kingdom of heaven is like a man, a man traveling to a far country who gave his servant and delivered them his goods to them. To the one he gave five talents because he knew that that one, he couldn't manage five talents. Sometimes we see great congregation and God may put a minister there to minister the great large congregation. Sometimes we see a small congregation. God has put that in the hand of that person who can manage that small congregation. But whatever it is that God gives us, we must use it. We must use it to his glory. So the one that was given five talent, he went and traded. And he got five more. That is to say, whatever God gave him, he used it to glorify God. Whatever the good man gave him, he worked on it. That's why we that's why we are given gifts, that we may use it to the glory in the natural. We are given position, and that position we are expected to use it to multiply. If it comes to financial in the world, we have to multi. We have to try to multiply whatever we get, because in this world it's it's as thus. People make profit. People think about profit. Everything is about profit. Whatever business you do, people think about profit. If you're opening a business, you're thinking, what will my profit be? Before you open a business, you may do a feasibility study to say, how much will I make if I invest this amount of money? How much what will I expect to get from my investment? You don't just start a business and expect to run it. You expect a profit because you want your business to continue. You want your business to, to grow. And so it is with God. God wants us. And when we do the work of God, whenever, whatever God calls us to do, when we do it, we ourselves are growing. And God wants us to grow. God don't call us to stay one place. Our God is a progressive God. And this is why this parable is given. So that person who was given five talent, he did what was wise. He traded it. He used it. He didn't put it down. He used it. He worked on how he could multiply that five. Because when his master comes, of course his, his master will expect to see something more than what he left him. And so it is, he worked on his five talent. And he and multiplied his five into ten talent. The man then, who the second one who he gave two talent, he also was wise. He knew that his master was going to come back and expect to have an increase in what he gave him. He, he, he was wise. He didn't expect that the master would come back and expect just what he gave him. Because this is how the world works and God works in the same way. God wants the how when he bless us, whatever gift he gives us, God wants us to use it to his glory. So the man who had two talents multiplied and got two more talents. And when, and the one who had just one talent, he gave him just one talent. That was what he was, that's, that's what he could manage. And to be honest with you, he could not even manage the one talent he gave, he got. But the good man thought, I, I have to give him something, have to give him something. Give him one talent. He took the one talent and the Bible says he dug out, he dug into the ground and hid it. Now, in, I want us to think about this man who was given one talent. What was going through his mind? He was not... He, I, I, he did not like his master, number one. He did not like his master. Even though his master gave him so, something, he did not like his master. He thought his master was cruel. He thought his master was mean. He thought his master was using him. And this is, this is, this is, this is what happened to people. People think that they are doing God's, God a favor. 
God, God don't need any favors. God don't need any favors. Whatever God do for us is for our own good. God don't need any favors. He don't need any. Nobody can do any favors to God. But this man who had one talent, he thought, I can't be bothered. This man is is a man who just expect us you know to um, to work for him and he don't want to work he, 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 he just he's an austere man he's a hard man and he just he has no compassion he was looking at the master in the wrong context when his master meant him good he thought his master was using him and because of that he took the one talent and dug in the ground and planted it. Now, here comes a good master after, after his long time away. There was plenty of time for, you know, for increase. There was plenty of time to, for profits to be made. It says, after a long time, in verse 19, Matthew chapter 25, verse 19, it says, after a long time, the Lord, the Lord of the servants came to settle his account. Day of reckoning. After a long time, the master, the Lord of the servants, came to settle his account with them. So it says, he that had received five talent came and bought five other talent, saying, Lord, you have delivered unto me five talent. Look, hallelujah, I have gained five more talent besides them. You understand that the master, the Lord, must be pleased. Because, number one, that man who was given five talent, he worked on it. Whatever he did, he worked on it. He, he worked on it, he worked on it, he worked on the five. After a while he got six, after a while he got seven, after a while he got eight, after a while he got nine, after a while he got ten. He's got ten talent out of the five that the master gave him. And he bought before the Lord ten talent. And the Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So God wants to be pleased with us. When he returns, and we all before God have to give an account. And when he returns, he expect to see he expect to see what we have done. He expect to see what we have done with the blessing that he has blessed us with. Whether it may be prophecy, whether it may be preaching, teaching, or whatever. Whether it may be witnessing to someone. Maybe, maybe, whether it may be praying for someone. Whatever it may be. Whatever the gift that God has given us. God expects us to work on it. Imagine that God has blessed us with something. Whatever it is. And we leave it one side and say, oh, I'm just continuing my life. I'm saved already. I don't have to worry about praying for someone. I don't have to worry about preaching the gospel. I don't have to worry about prophesying. I don't have to worry about witnessing. I don't have to worry about caring for those who are in need. Imagine that we are like that and God has already put something in us. And we are doing nothing. We are not putting anything out. But this man who had five talents, he worked on the five talents. And when his good Lord came, he was, he was happy to say, Look, you gave me five talents, I have got five more. And the Lord was pleased. He called him, You good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Brethren, brethren, blessing 
Our blessing is yet to come. Our blessing is yet to come. We only need to be faithful to God. We ain't seen nothing yet. We, we cannot imagine what God has prepared for those who love Him. We cannot imagine that. The great God of heaven, the great creator of the universe, the God who created the land and the sea, the God that created all these uh, everything that creepeth upon the earth, everything that is in the sea, everything upon the that flies, every bird that flies in the air, the God that created all these things. He's coming back. He's going to say, "What have you done? Have you, have you, have you prayed for anyone? Have you made intercession for anyone? Have you, got, have you led anyone?" to salvation? Have you witnessed to anyone? Have you helped those that are in need? Have you done? What have you done? And so God expects us to say, have to say, bring something. And so he was, the good Lord was happy with his servant because he multiplied his five talent, made it ten. Also, the one who had received one talent came and said, Lord, Lord, you have delivered unto me two talents. The one that had received two talents. He said, Lord, do you have delivered unto me two talents? Look, I have gained two more. Two more talent on the two you gave me. Because God know what we can manage. God knew the man who got five talents could manage five. He knew the one who had two talents could manage two. He gave him two talents and he said he worked on the two talents. And he made the two talents four talents. And said, Lord, the two talents you gave me, I have made two on top of it. And the Lord said unto him, well done, well done, good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful in a few things, I will make you ruler over many things, enter into joy of your Lord. The work that we do down here in relation to the gospel our reward is not down here. Our blessing is not down here. Our blessing will come when Jesus comes to reward his servants. When he will say unto those that are faithful, he will say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I have, I have, I will make you ruler over many things because you were faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Isn't it wonderful? Wouldn't that be wonderful when we hear God say to us, Good and faithful servant, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. But because you have been faithful in a few things, I will make you ruler over many things. Isn't that wonderful? So we, our duty, God expect us to use whatever gift he give us to his glory. To his glory. The best is yet to come. Our, our joy, our peace, our aspiration, our reward, our reward is yet to be given. It will not be given here. When we finish our journey, when we finish our work, we will be rewarded by the good Lord. Now comes the one 
Then the one, verse 24, Matthew 25, verse 24, then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping what you have not sown and gathering what you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. Unfaithful, corrupt, unrighteous, evil, covetous. This one man, this man, who was given one talent and took it and dig a ground and dig a hole and put it in the ground, was an evil man. He had no love. He had no care. He had no compassion. He was, he was, a, he was a, a prime example of evil and wickedness. Why? He was given a talent. He was given a gift. Imagine someone give you something and the person who give you something you're cursing that person? I, I just want to see the mentality of, of this individual who God gave one talent, who the good Lord gave one talent. I wanted to see the mentality of this person who got just one talent. He got one talent because he couldn't manage, he couldn't manage two, so he got one. But after receiving that one talent, that one talent or one at that gift, whatever it is, a talent, a gift. After receiving that gift, he began to curse that person, the good Lord, the, the good man who gave him. He began to curse that person. You see the mentality? That's a deranged mentality, deranged mentality. Because he think he's going to help the good man, he, he believes he's going to do a favor to the good man, the Lord. He, he believes he's going to do a favor to the good man. And he have everything but he was covetous. He was, he, was, he was evil. He was evil. He said, I knew you. He said, I was, first of all, he said, I was afraid. You got one talent. What are you afraid of? You got one gift that you never had. What are you afraid of? He said, I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. Evil mentality. Evil mentality. But in verse 26 it says, But his Lord answered and said unto him, You wicked and lazy servant you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed so you ought to have deposited my money into the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own interest therefore take this talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. I was afraid. Fear is an enemy. Fear is not our friend. Fear is an enemy. Because he said, I was afraid. What was he afraid of? He went. He could have as the as good Lord said he could have put his money into the bank and get an interest on it on his one talent even that he, might, he, he, he would have been accepted 
So it behooves us it behooves us that we remember the Lord has given us something and He give us whatever He give us. He don't give it the Bible says, Ye are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. And God has, he said, uh, 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 you can't light a candle and put it under your bed or whatever. You have to put it on the table so that it can f light up the whole room. We, are, we have to be a light. We have to shine that somebody may see something in us. It says, Jesus said, let your light shine that men may see your good works and be led to glorify your Father in heaven. We are the light of the world. We have to shine. The sinner out there is not reading the Bible. They are reading us. They are reading the way we live. They are reading our life. They are reading the way we conduct ourselves. And this is what they are leading. Is there something in this person? Is there something in this? They are watching every move we make. And every everything we say, they are recording it. And they want to see something in us. They want to see a light in us. But this servant had one talent and took it and hide it on the ground and cursed his master. He cursed his master. His master who is trying to help him. And if we think about it as a master, the master himself was not a man in need but he wanted to help someone and God help us and so we should help someone the master didn't need any help but he wanted to help his servant so he, he awarded to them their talent and the master says therefore verse 28 take this take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talent. Imagine now that the one talent that he had, that the master gave him, and when the master came back, he presented just the one talent. The master took that one talent that he gave him and gave it to the one who had ten. Because if he had one talent and he had not made any use of it, it's no use to him. It's no use to him. He had one talent. He did not multiply it to make another talent. He, he, he dig a, put it in the ground. He didn't even put it in the bank. He put it in the ground. He has no use for it. So the master did well. The good Lord did well. He took the one talent and gave it to the one who had ten. We have to understand what God is saying to us. That God expect us to be there to do His work. God expect God put something in us, and what He put in us, He wanted to impart unto others. That's why He said to His disciples, "Go through all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to repent, and be baptized." That's that's a commission. That's the commission. And so we, our word is that Jesus is Lord. He is Savior. He's a lover of mankind. He's a lover of the world. He's a redeemer of all men. And so in end, it says, for everyone, everyone who has, more shall be given. And he shall have abundance. But he that does not have even that which is, shall be taken away and he says cast that unprofitable servant into utter darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth we all we have to do is to give God praise and give God glory because he's worthy 
of our praises. He's worthy of all the praise that we can give unto Him because God is good. The one that had the one talent did not like, had no love, had no love for his master. So he took his one talent and hid it in the ground. The moral of this of this um, moral of this uh, is telling us that God expects us to do his work. That God expects us to be there and be a light unto the world. And so let us give him the praise and give him the glory for what he has done, for what he's doing. And um, and realize that God expects something from us. God doesn't save us for nothing. He saves us because He wants us to use us. He says, I am gone, and the works I do, greater works will He do. So let us be there for Jesus. Let us lift up Jesus. Let us glorify our Lord and our King and our Savior. The good Lord bless you, my brethren. I'm going to stop right here. Um, I will stop right here and um, if anyone has anything to say I will leave it open in regard to this parable that Jesus spoke parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning and so let us be like the good servant that Jesus, that the Lord says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things, but I will make you Lord over many things. God bless you. We come to the end of, of this part of the service. Um... May the good Lord bless and keep you and continue giving God the praise and give Him the glory because He's worthy. He is worthy of all our praises. Our God is good. Our God is great. Our God is mighty. And our God is coming back again. When we see what is going on around us and the wars and the rumors of war, the pestilence and all that is going on, it shows us that He's coming back. Jesus says, I am going to prepare a place for you, that where I am ye may be also. In my Father's house there are many mansions. Imagine that God has got a mansion prepared for every one of his children. He has a mansion. This world is going to pass away. We know that. The Bible tells us that this earth, the whole entire earth as we see it, the whole entire world, it shall pass away. That's what the Bible tells us. We know. Because John saw on the Isle of Patmos, he saw when God took John the Divine to show him what was to come. He showed him what was and what is and what was to come. Because John was on the Isle of Patmos, for the revelation of Jesus Christ. And he said, I was in the spirit of the I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he mentioned that he saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down from heaven from God. So by that we know that this world, no matter how beautiful it may be. No matter how splendid this world may be, it will pass away. It will pass away. It may not pass away in our lifetime, but it will pass away. And God shall restore unto us a new heaven and a new earth. So let us, as we go from day to day, let us see and know 
that this is not our home. The patriots and prophet Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Bible says that they say they could not find on this earth an abiding city. It says they seek it a city eternal in the heaven, made without hands. Because whatever God make is made without hands. Because it's eternal. The patriots and prophet saw that in this world there was no foundation. If there were foundation in this world, they would not have been looking for a city eternal in the heaven made without hands whose maker and builder is God. And so we too, my brethren, we too must look for a city. Not this world, not this world, but look for a city because one day, if we live or we die, one day we shall see Jesus. And when we see Jesus, the words that we want to hear is the words that he spoke to the, 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 serv the servant who had the five talent, who bought five more. He, he wants to hear, Lord, thou hast given me five talent, I have made five besides. God wants to hear us to say, I have done what you asked me to do. As Paul said when he was about to be when he was about to be executed in Rome, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. He knew what he had done for God. He knew what he had achieved. He was assured. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. He said, henceforth there is laid up a crown, a crown for me. And he went on to say, not for me only, but all those who love their appear his appearance. Brethren, we should all love, think about the appearance of Jesus Christ. Heaven, there's nothing on this earth that can compare to the glory of God. Nothing on this earth can compare to the joy that God has prepared for them that love him. Nothing on this earth. If he was a millionaire, a billionaire, whatever you may have achieved, it does not compare to what God has prepared for those that love him. If we love the Lord, be assured. If we love the Lord, be assured that he's gone to prepare a place for us. And one day, one day, we will be taken, whether we live or whether we die. Because the Bible says, the trump shall sound and the dead in Christ. Those who died in Christ, those people who, Christian who died and is laid in the grave. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise out of the grave. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. That is our aspiration. That is our dream. That is what we work for. That is why we serve the Lord. For a better hope. Because the Bible says, if in this life only we have hope, we would have been men most miserable. The good Lord bless you, my brethren. Um, God bless you, Pastor Winston, um, Pastor Winston McCann. God bless you. Um, if you would like to share a few words before we close, Pastor Winston. Yes, sir. Greetings, greetings. Greetings to you, sir. Greetings. Yes. Greetings to your nice to be on the platform tonight. Amen. One of when you say, is there um, a thumbs up? The God is to you.
talking about of God for each week is a is a blessing. I learn a lot from you and continue doing what you're doing. Can we hear each other and then learn yeah. from each other? Uh, well, I want to day in church today. I enjoy church. That's my life. Church is my life. I'm not here to do when you have to go to church and serve God. We are not part of being good to us. Good to me and good to you all. And my mind may come on this week to serve God to the end. And on one final day, the ball is over. We are back. against the That's right. Amen. What to Jesus Christ? God, God is made there on the earth. And here when you claim the glory of God, the word of God is on the world and the on the world. When you look at one and see the sun, the star, the moon, the sky, you know what they write God, and not alone. God is awesome. God is wonderful. God is glorious. God is kind. God is excellent. He's perfect. He's wonderful. Hallelujah. And today we come to celebrate Jesus. Then we got to exalt your name. That is God and God alone. When they keep us in the fight, they will fight for him. If only that was the swift, they would have got to. But those who endure to the end. Shall be saved. To the end. Shall be saved. To the end. A part of it. A part of it. To the end. Don't let it pass. Don't let it pass. Don't let it pass. That's what it is. you pastor winston god bless you sir yes um we, the bible says he that endure to the end um quite true they shall be saved i mean we are in a war and we have to understand we're in a spiritual war 
We are in a spiritual war and we have to fight. We are, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So every day we are under attack. Whether we know or not, but we are under attack. And we have to hold fast. As Pastor Winston said, we hold fast to Jesus. Because we are under attack one way or the other. The devil, as if we com commit to Jesus, and if we are followers of Christ, that's why Jesus says, he who would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross. No Christian has an easy walk. No Christian. If we are if we are in the world, the devil don't worry about us because he, we are, he has us already. But when we when we claim Jesus, he is fighting to the nail because he wants us to turn away from the living God. But praise be to God. The Bible says, "What can separate me from the love of God?" Principality, powers, heights, and debt things present and things to come. Nay, we are more than conquerors. God has given us power to overcome the devil, to overcome the demons, the wickedness of this world. Jesus overcame and we will overcome through Jesus and through his blood. So let be, let us be joyful in the Lord. Let us be joyful in the Lord. Continue trusting him. Continue to lean on him. Never doubt the Lord. Amen. Because God cannot fail. It doesn't matter what the condition. Amen. When the devil say yeah, Jesus says no. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's continue on the battlefield. God bless you, Pastor Winston. God bless you. All who has joined us, our sister PT, and we have Sister Jean my, um, Roy, or I think it's Pastor, um, uh, Pastor Roy. Pastor Roy, I think it's Pastor Roy. Pastor Roy? Uh, Roy, yeah, Roy, yeah. the word is Roy from God Dominica. bless you, Pastor Roy. I saw you came up as sister, as Jean, sorry. God bless you. It's good to have you, Pastor. Amen, amen, amen. Bless you. Would you like to impart a few words to us, sir? Good to have you. Uh, well, I would say that what you sent out tonight was Logos. But we always have to receive the Logos and transform it into Rhema. And oh, the right. logos, logos is the written word. He says, um, how can they hear except they have a preacher? So the preacher has spoken to us tonight, and he will, he's given us the Logos. Then he takes the power and the anointing, the presence, the person, and the power of the Holy Spirit to transform that word. John chapter 14 and verse 26 says, he will teach us all things and he will bring all things. You heard what I said? Yes. All things to our remembrance. Yes. Like John chapter 14 yes. verse 26. So yes. I want to give God thanks tonight that this word, um, I think one of the nights you shared on um, Psalm 92 verse, verse, verse 1 and this has been good food for me. <laughs> so I've been enjoying the word. Thank God. Thank God. But unless we transform the logos to become rhema in our life then, it does not it does not help us the bible says we become like 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 babes you know because we 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 supposed to be eating strong meat but then we become like babies if we cannot transform and you know let that word be applicable and be you know active and alive in our life so thank god the what you're doing the job you're doing it's tremendous it's beautiful it's excellent it's marvelous in our eyes and we give thanks and we give praise thank you i want to Hail Pastor Winston, you know, that we've been helping out with him, my wife and myself. And Amen. Yeah, just, I just love his yeah. name and his beautiful first yes, lady. Yes. So I want to reach out to him and say hi, hi. Amen. Blessings to all. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes, God bless you, Pastor. Well, it's good to see you. Um, yeah, you mentioned something about we not we can't be drinking milk. And that's, that's I think that's similar to what, what I was saying. So we can't. God call us, and we can't be a baby all the time. We have to grow up. A baby, in Amen. a natural to baby grow. has yes. to grow up. A baby can't be a baby all his life. We have Amen. to stop drinking milk and start to, you know, start to chew, you know. And yep. so God expect now God don't expect us to be drinking milk. God expect us to grow up and start to, you know, get into the word, get deep into the word, understand God, know God. God want us to know Him. God want us to understand Him. God want us us to befriend him. God wants to reveal himself to us. God wants us, you know, Abraham was said to be a friend of God. 
because Abraham loved God and Abraham was in tune with God and all the patriots and prophets they were people who loved God and when we love God God just opened up himself for us and then we will not be always drinking milk we will be able to be strong and when we are strong then we can fight but when we are weak we can we are push over but God wants us to be strong and we can only be strong in the word of God so God bless you pastor Roy, and God bless Amen. you pastor. let me just say according to Nehemiah there were, you have started a great work there are some barracks and two buyers in the way that according to Nehemiah book of Nehemiah but he says you have started a great work so I commend you and I bless you for what you're doing in the kingdom of righteousness amen it's all for the glory of God my um pastor Roy everything we do down here is for the glory of God because you know <laughs> there's nothing we can do to, to, to pay for our salvation it doesn't matter how hard we work down here we cannot we cannot buy our salvation our salvation is given to us by the grace of God so I agree with you but you know give God thanks and give God the glory because he is so worthy he is so worthy and that's why we are here tonight, just to give God the glory. God bless you. Pastor Roy, I have a dear a brother from the United States. Um, I think he's a police officer. I think he's been promoted. Andrew, God bless you, Andrew. God, glad to have you, Andrew, from the United States. Um, and also my daughter, Ajamida, which is their colleague together in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the police force. Well, God bless you. We'll pray for you both, Andrew and um, Ajumida. Also, Delia and my son, God bless you. And PT, Sister PT, Sister Brina, God bless you. God bless every one of you. May God bless and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. I just close a short prayer. Father, I thank you for all my brothers, my brethren, all the ministers who has joined this teleconference. I pray you bless us. I pray you will keep us. I pray you will continue to reveal yourself to us. I pray you will continue to draw near to us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to see you more clearly each and every day. Lord God, we bless you and we praise you. We thank you for the sacrifice which you made for us on the cross when you gave your life for us. Lord, we cannot thank you enough. We cannot praise you enough. We cannot glorify you enough. But Lord, accept our humble thanks. Oh God, we give you glory. Pray you will lead us and guide us and bless us as we give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you, my brethren. Yeah. God bless every one of you. Have a wonderful